Hello. In this video we are going to discuss how to post-process laminate results. We will envelope results for 16 load cases, locate critical fiber failures, identify which load case is causing the failure, and in which ply the failure is occurring. As you can see, we have result sets, output sets, that is, for 16 load cases. The simplest and most common way to envelope all the results is to simply right click on the analysis study and select envelope study max absolute value. I can then activate this enveloped output set and I can plot the laminate max failure index. I'm going to switch to a criteria view. What this shows me is if I turn labels on, right, I'm going to ignore the fiber failure around the holes where I have the model constrained, and I'm just going to look where I have another peak, and I see a fiber failure index of 1.26. Anything above 1 indicates a failure, right? If I turn labels back off and zoom out, you can see I kind of have symmetric peaks at these two corners. So that enveloping process allows me to look at the maximum failure index or the max absolute value of any output data at every element across all 16 output sets. It also allows me if I toggle the output set to set info and turn labels back on, I see an ID of 15 on this critical element which indicates that the max failure index comes from output set 15 which corresponds to load case 15. So from that I can identify, I can locate where the failure is occurring and identify which load case. It's a little trickier however to identify which ply the failure is occurring in. I can go to output set 15 because I know that's where it's coming from to figure out which ply, I have to go to the output vector, go to ply 1, plot ply 1 fiber failure index, but it's 0.49, not 1.26. So I go back in, I can go to ply 2, fiber failure index, 0.75, and I can proceed in that manner until I find which ply fiber failure index equals the critical or max one of 1.26. Another way to envelope results that's a little more customizable, flexible, and a little bit more specific is to use the model output process command. Inside this command we will select one or more selected output vectors and there are many different commands you can execute from within this uh, dialog box. We're going to envelope our data we're going to choose the max value. We're going to envelope all locations for each vector, both within output sets and across output sets. Now, these are the settings you'll want, and I can explain what this does in just a moment. Now we'll select the output to process and choose our output sets. I'm going to choose all output sets except for the envelope sets that we just created. From vector, just pick one or the other. Uh, Nastrian cases and then I'm going to filter and I'm going to say five fill and now what we're going to do is envelope these vectors which is the fiber failure index in each ply, ply 1 through ply 10 we're going to envelope that data to find the maximum across all 10 plies and across all 16 output sets. And that data will be stored into its own new output set. So I'll say OK and OK again. And you can see a new output set was created called Envelope All Locations. If I activate that output set and plot, I need to change the output vector. And you can see I have three output vectors. The first is going to show us the actual fiber failure index. The second one is the set info indicating which output set the critical failure index comes from. And then the third is the location info, info 
which indicates which ply, right, which location or which ply. We did 1 through 10. So an integer of 5 would mean that the critical fiber failure comes from ply 5. So let's first look at the actual failure index. And if we switch to a criteria view and we zoom in, we can see the 1.26. And if we toggle our output vector to set info, we can see it comes from load case 15. If we toggle to location info, we can see it comes from ply 5. Now, since we have a failure, as an engineer designing this part, what I would do is I want to understand what kind of stresses are in this element in ply number 5 for this load case. Figure out what is causing, the, what type of uh, stress component is causing the failure. That will indicate to us how we might edit the local ply or the local laminate to improve its strength to get a positive margin and get a failure index below 1. So that since I know uh, the critical failure comes from output set 15, I'm going to change to output set 15. Okay, I know it comes from ply5, so the output vector, I'm going to go down to my ply5 data, and I'm going to look at the X normal stress. Right. And now I can just toggle X stress, Y isn't as high, right? We're looking at 58,000, Y normal stress is only 15,000, uh, X, Y shear stress is only 500, right? So it's pretty safe to say that component causing the failure is this X normal stress. But let's take another look at that. Let's turn the labels off and we can turn deformations on. If we zoom out we can see we have this bending here. So you can see how maybe in that direction we get X stress. But let's look at ply 5 of our 6 ply layup. And we'll notice that ply 5 is a 0 degree ply it's global ply 7. So it makes sense. The element normals are in the plus Z direction, meaning that ply 5 is towards the top or above the mid surface in this view. So it makes sense that ply 5, X normal stress, would be in a lot of compression. So if we want to bring that failure index down below 1, we can locally add another 0 degree ply, or we need to find some way to stiffen this member or drive load away from this area. This concludes uh, our brief summary on how to post-process laminate results, how to envelope the data, identify critical failures, locate where they're occurring, identifying the critical load case and which ply it's occurring in, and then how to look at individual stress components in that region to figure out what may need to be done to strengthen that area locally or alter the design or alter the load path. Thank you for joining us and I hope this video was useful.